Today we're getting serious on these topics and it's going to unfold rather quickly as you look at all the information compared to what we've seen before. The first thing, of course, we have to talk about inflation. The second thing I want to look at is the consumer because that's what's really important. What happens to you as an individual? And of course, the third thing is the shortages. They are just everywhere today and I'm going to be showing you all of this. Let's go. You may have already seen this data, but I wanted to show you because it leads into what we need to talk about. Consumer prices post smaller than expected increases in August. Consumer prices in August rose 5.3% from a year ago and 0.3% from July. Both totals were slightly below the market expectations and that sent the stock futures higher. But then, as you may be aware, I'm looking over here and you could see the markets were all red. The Dow Jones being down almost 300 points by the end of the day. Look, if you strip out the food and energy, the consumer price index was up just 0.1% because you want to remove the most important factors to have an accurate set of data, right? Mm, I, I guess. But what's important here is that the U.S. poverty rate rose from 60-year low and incomes fell as well. We'll talk more about the incomes in a second here. But just understand what's happening. As all of this money printing is going on, as all of these stimulus packages, the infrastructure, the, the stimulus checks, every, everything, all of that, you're actually seeing the conditions worsen for the average person. Understand that this is completely and entirely unsustainable. You can't have a economy that runs off of fumes. It needs substance. Median household income dropped 2.9% to $67,000 in 2020. The poverty rate increased to 11.4%. This is after all of that money came through. Think about that for a second. How does that make any sense? Two thirds of businesses around the world are struggling to hire. This problem here that the US has, it's not just the United States, okay? It's all over the world, it seems. And there are, you know, there, there's data in here if you wanna check it out, but I, I just wanted to show you the fact that, look, every business today is being shut down, they're being restricted and all these different problems. At the same time, you've got people that can't make ends meet. So the problem is compounding on many, many levels. Look at this, $3.5 trillion. That's, look, like I have to count this every time I see these big numbers, all right? 100, 100,000, you got the millions, you got the billions, and $3.5 trillion. Federal tax collection set record through August. So you've got people suffering more than ever before, but the government is taking in more money than ever before. Doesn't seem to be doing any good for the people, does it? They take in record amounts of tax constantly, all the time all the time and yet it doesn't fix anything look look at what's happened from 1991 up until the present on average more and more and more and more and more so what's going on here well anyway american household income fell in 2020 it's first decline since 2011 they're just giving you the stats more on that if you're interested the brunt of the full-time job losses were borne by low-income workers with a census finding that about 54% of the lost jobs paid less than $34,000 a year. Talking about last year and what had happened. So these low-income people, now they are relying, or some of them in this case here, are still relying on the government stimulus, the government assistance, social assistance programs. Many of those have ended but some of them, the child credit, this credit, that credit, are still happening and people are still getting paid that way. But this has affected the economy negatively. And some have said that this inflation that has been reduced somewhat is because of this. That people aren't able to go to the store as often to buy the knickknacks and all of these things that they want. Because quite frankly, there isn't as much money coming in. I have shown you time and time again how this 
stimulus has directly correlated with the consumer sentiment and the spending. Look at this. Consumer demand must ease to end the supply chain crisis, according to Maersk. Okay? Only way to end the vicious cycle, uh, circle of shortages is for people to buy less. So that, that, that's a simple matter of fact. Look at these ships, I mean, off the coast of, of LA Long Beach. I didn't include it in this one, but I had an individual a subscriber of mine send me some pictures. I'm going to show them to you that give you the real boots on the ground to show you that it, it, this is not just coming out of the Financial Times or whatever publication. Like This is actually happening. So in the next video, if I can, I will include those images for you. But it's basically what you're seeing here. One of the world's largest port and terminal operators has warned that the global shipping and supply chain crisis that is leaving shelves empty on the high street can be resolved only by a slowdown in consumer demand. What's he saying? We need a recession in order to fix the problem. Have you ever heard that one before? Quote, we need to work out how we break this vicious circle. We need lower consumer demand growth to give the supply chain time to catch up or differently spread out that growth. Over a long period of time, we will need to recover efficiently. Efficiency. I mean, you just never heard of anything like that. Supply chain issues add to stagflationary winds. Waves of disruption suggest the longer term forces are in play. You know, there's a lot in here, but essentially talking about the, the store shelves, they're talking about problems with supply chains. Culprit is a mix of disrupted supply chains, high transportation costs, container scarcity, and congested ports, labor shortages, and so on. Look, you've heard all the data before, but it's just coming all at once. And this, as I've said, and we'll talk about more in just a second, cannot go on forever. So let's discuss this. I'm going to make a long story short. This, what you're seeing today, is in fact unsustainable. The only way for this to end is to massively reduce demand. Is that going to happen? Some suggest yes, others suggest no way. If it doesn't, you will see a shock like we've never seen before. I believe it is very important for investors to reduce the amount of leverage they have somewhat and diversify their holdings. Things are getting wacky today and people are inexperienced and don't really understand the complexity of what we're dealing with because of what happens when you print this much money. It disrupts and distorts. Be careful. If you're interested, you can look at the heat map showing you the month over month CPI heat map. And if I pull out the highlighter, I could tell you this is August 2021's data. So it just shows you food and energy. By the way, 0.4% for uh, August. And you look through here, you know, that, that is high compared to some of the other months. But who knows? Who knows where this all is? Because I'm going to show you the year over year. And as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't match up to reality. But anyway, you could look at that if you want. They have the core CPI and they give you a good breakdown. I can't cover it all, obviously, but the links will be in the description. Or you can simply pause it and zoom in if you need to. Looking at this year over year. Okay. What about this? What about food? Year over year. Okay. I mean, I can't even, I can't believe it. Year over year food increase, 3.74%. You tell me in the comments section below, what do you think your increase year over year? What do you think it is? Maybe let's call it a year and a half. Okay, beginning of 2020 up until today. What do you think your increase in the price that you pay for your food? Let's leave the energy aside. Let's leave... All the other things, I'm talking about specifically food. What do you think? And this percentage, of course, works wherever you are in the world. If you're in the United States, if you're in the UK, Australia, or anywhere. The percentage terms, what do you think it's been for you? I know many people actually measure that and keep an eye on it. So please let me know. 
Okay, and you look through this and you can just see that clearly year over year, the inflation has been ridiculous. They have been pointing to the used cars and trucks, which we'll talk more about in a minute. And that has certainly been a problem. Lodging away from home has also gone up considerably. Motor vehicles and parts, you know the, you know the deal, okay? Look at this. You could see that it has declined. This is the CPI, urban consumers, less food and energy. Just showing you that year over year, month over month, this has come down. They, you know, can say what they want, but ultimately, we only know in time how this has an impact on the economy as a whole. We have seen the economy slow down, so we'll see. There's more data here if you want to take a look at it. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I just want to show you this. The used car and trucks has started to come down. Now, does that mean that we are entering a period of deflation and oh my goodness? No, we're talking about coming off a ridiculous peak, so we'll see where it ends up, okay? It's not just one component that we have to worry about. The point I wanted to make is that if you see this starting to come down, we are talking about the manipulated statistics. That's why I'm asking you to put in the comment section what your food inflation is. They strip away the food and the energy, okay, but if you and I come to a conclusion as to, you know, the price increases, then we can decide what it is for real. Of course, it's going to depend on where you are, where you shop, what you eat, and so on, okay? Real Fed funds rate, the effective Fed funds rate less the CPI year over year. You're seeing that in the negative 5.16%. This is just showing you that historically, the chart goes back to the 1950s. Historically, these are the easiest monetary policy, fiscal policy, and so on that we have ever seen before. The maximum amount of stimulus ever in history. Think about how crazy that is. Think about that. At the same time, they're telling us that the economy is doing well. Why? Why are we doing this then? ISM manufacturing customer inventories. You can see the inventories have been declining. And this is, of course, a real problem if we can rely on the data. It is, in fact, a very real problem. Who knows? Who knows where this will end up? But certainly, because of the supply chain issues, because of all the ships hanging out off the coast, this is really impacting the businesses and, of course, making you pay more for all kinds of things, all right? And then a little bit of odd, you know, you've never seen this before, but there's a massive flower shortage right now. I mean, you just never heard of something like this before. We're not talking about tulips. We're not talking about tulips. But essentially what they say is a lot of people had postponed their weddings and so on. So now there's this huge surge to get it on, all right? So that's just something I just think that you know, what we saw 2020 and beyond were often cases of things that you know, we just never saw before. So th this data coming now gives us a lot of insight into the future, future potential, uh, future events, which may happen uh, in, in the near future. Who knows, right? If you're not an insider already, take a look at this. It's my way to get to you directly. Five days a week, I will email you the video of the day right here you can get it at this card or at the money gps.com if you want to support the channel it's pretty easy just hit that thumbs up button i really appreciate that if you haven't seen this video already then all you gotta do is click here and i'll see you there